hello and let's get into it. Uh, this is the Wrong Speed YouTube channel when uh, I'm fed up of not talking to people about records. So I'm getting some friends and acquaintances and band members and uh, label recording people on and we're going to talk about some records. And first up today is uh, Mr. Bob Davis, who I've known since we were two, give or take. So that means we've been in a band together since we were two, because I'm pretty sure we would have sung together in nursery. Um, and then uh, we went on to be in this band here, which is Stanton, with my brother and Simon Hughes, and we released it on our own label, Johnson Family. The four of us ran that label. And the most latest thing we've done together, of course, is the uh, Colossus album. Mm. Hello, Bob. How are you doing? Hello. I'm all right. I'm all right. It's good to see you. How's Watford doing? Really good. Not football, just in general, in life. It's It was lovely and sunny today. I went for a walk. It was great. And uh, it was nice. It's all right. It, it treats me well. <laughs> um, so we're going we're to be talking about records. I can see that you like them. Oh, yeah, I've got one or two. Yeah. Uh, so let's just get straight into it. Tell me about uh, a record you've got from your favourite record shop. Well, um, there's a shop in my hometown of Watford called the LP Cafe, which is run by a good mate of mine called Paul. Uh, it, is, it is quite literally what it is. It's a record shop and a cafe. And occasionally, when we could um, uh, have gigs, he would put the odd show on. Um, and I was, I've was i seen quite a lot of shows down there, but one of the shows I saw, I did get the record, it's right behind me, was um, I caught um, Rosie Plain did a an in-store in there. Um, don't know that. There she is. Oh, it's a brilliant record. It's on Memphis Industries. It's a cool label. She's part yeah. of, um, she's also in This Is The Kit. That's the sort of, I think that's her main band. Oh, yeah. But she did a, she did a little in-store in there. Um, Wait. There you go. Can you read that? 180 gram glow-in-the-dark vinyl. Yeah, I played it last night, and um, it, it does glow in the dark. It looks pretty cool. But she, yeah, she, 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 she played in there, and um, it was actually the day she played in there was a the day um, Watford beat Wolves at Wembley, because I managed to check out the gig and then jump on the train to Wembley and uh, see Watford get through to the final of the FA Cup. So it was that day. Oh, the semi final of the FA Cup. Yeah, it was really good. There's only about there's about sort of maybe like 30, 30, 40 people in there watching her. Oh, it's yeah. just really nice, really nice music. She, she she's really cool, and she um, she just makes these really good tunes. Have a look at the record. Get the record out. Show us the record. I know. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, there's, there's a chance that the camera could flip over because I'm I was balancing it with my finger. So <laughs> let's have a look. <laughs> there you go. You can't. It's not obviously not. Oh, there we go. I knew it would happen. There you go. All right. Yeah, yeah. I see. I see it really the, does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there you go. Yeah, but it's um, it's a cool record. But it's it, yeah, but I, I I bought it like I said, I bought it um, I bought it from the LP Cafe in Watford. And it does uh, I can't wait to when he he can start putting shows on in there again because it's I've been to about, about ten or so over the last few years. He's, he's, Who else you seen that? Who else you seen? A couple of local bands um saw a band they called the Funeral Shakes who are really good um sort of, sort of bit rocket from the crypty sort of stuff, and Paul's got a band himself called Nervous. They played in there a few times. I've seen them, which uh, they're worth seeing. I was, I see, there was, oh, I can't remember. I've seen quite a few people in there. Um, oh, I can't think of any other names now. Though. They're all sort of avoiding me. But it's just a really cool place. It's a nice place to hang out. And he's always got a good stock of vinyl in there as well, new, new and second hand. So it's, it's a place I like going to and buying records from and having a coffee with Paul. I'm furious myself that I've never been there. Chris and Paul have been down there because they we, we had a bit of time before um, a gig we had to drive to and they were both in Watford yeah. so we went down there and we all just bought loads of records and then headed off to the gig all very happy so it's a it's a wonderful place when it when it first opened they just put this big sign up on the shop and it's on the ring road and you see it and you drive around the ring road and it just said the LP cafe is coming and I've never been so excited to live in Watford yeah. until that sign went up and I was like yes. I can't begin to tell you how excited I'd be if I saw the sign <laughs> <laughs> you but yeah that's there used to be a record shop in North Watford. Is that still there? No, um, that's long gone. Oh, there used to be one on St Albans Road. I think that's long, long gone now. Yeah, I can't remember what 
people. There's another. There is another one in. Um, there's another record shop I love in Watford. It's actually in Bushy called Second Scene. Yeah. Which is run by a guy called Julian, um, and it is just crazy. It's it's a room not much bigger than my front room, and it's just packed to the rafters full of vinyl. Um, and he's just a really lovely guy. He plays drums in a band called Cranium Pie. Who are on that? Um, what's that label that's based down near you? Uh, fruit, fruits to fruits oh, to fruit, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's on that. Yeah, so he 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 plays drums in this crazy psych band called Cranium Pie, but he runs this record shop in um in in sort of Watford. I might have the song by them on a compilation, a head music compilation. Oh, possibly. Yeah, I've only got one record on that label. They, their records worth a lot quite quickly. On yeah, that. Well, he actually said to me when he was in the shop, he said, um, "We've got this new record coming out. You should buy two copies, one to flog on eBay, because they're yeah. immediately." They're immediately like sort of 50 quid a, a, a day after you bought it, they're sold out. Yeah, that and so, actually, I, I didn't I didn't buy it at all, which I kind of I completely forgot about it. <laughs> so I missed out twice. Yeah, I got a feeling um Phil from uh Victory Garden, uh he's pressed some records for them. Lave. Yeah, he would have done the yeah. live cut stuff. Yeah, he yeah. would have done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's he, that's that's actually saying that there's another record I did pull out. Oh, it's gone. It was a it was a Laurie Anderson record that I bought there only maybe about a year ago, and it was a it's a brilliant Laurie Anderson record. I can't find it. I had it, I did actually have it pulled out, but there we go. Um, but I got it up there, and it's just got like Nile Rodgers and stuff on it. It's a brilliant record. I can't remember what it's called, and it's there somewhere behind me, and I can't find it. Uh, I, can, I, did have it. I can make it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, you have to just believe me. It's that way. It's that one somewhere. <laughs> so yeah, again, another another really cool shop. Just yeah. Um, yeah. Or walkable from my house, which is what I want. Oh my god, yeah, no, I haven't got one here. I can't, oh, like, should... uh, like the nearest record shop of worth is in Froome, and it's like a 45 minute drive. Otherwise, I've got mm. Bristol, yeah, <laughs> never mind, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, uh, we're gonna go for, um, basically, I've picked five or six, uh, uh, what, like subjects for the people to mm. pick records by. So, second is, uh, Record with memories. Yeah, all, all my records have got huge memories. I, I'm, I, it's, you know my mind works in crazy ways, and I can remember the details of the most stupid things. That I don't need to have... Yeah, I, me, I really I, have stuff. the best memory of anyone I know. In, but it's it's not beneficial to me in terms of getting like <laughs> well-paid jobs or that sort of stuff. It's just crap information I have in my head that I don't need yeah, where yeah. I bought a record and who I was with when I bought and what I had for lunch when I bought it and shit like that. But um, I'll have to say that this, I've got this Gaunt record. We went to see Gaunt at the, um, uh, they supported Newborn Turks at the, at the garage. Yeah, yeah. And they came on stage and it was this tour, they were playing the, off that tour. That record was so good. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and sadly, Jerry Wick uh, is no longer with us. But they came on and they played... Um, they came on stage and they, they 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 did like three or four songs and then they said this song is by guide of our voices if you don't know them they will rock your world and by luck about a day or two later i went to oven ready records in um aylesbury and i picked up this and it was in a bucket of cheap records down and underneath like for a fiver it's now worth about 100 quid it's the it's the limited blue vinyl <laughs> but that was <laughs> and so that's that that gaunt gig Put me on the God, God by Voices. Yeah, the band I've never heard of. Yeah, exactly the same. Exactly the same for me. I'd never heard of them until Gordon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I know we and, both and, went on a bit of a spree with them. Yeah. Oh God, I'd, I'd still listen to them loads, and, and um, I think they're, I think they're brilliant. But, um, but that that record, picking that record up, and, and also put it on for the first time when I remember got it home, and I stuck it on. And I was like, I can't I can't work out if I absolutely detest this record or not because it's so bonkers when you first hear them. Because yeah, yeah. the recordings, the recordings are sort of really sort of shonky and nothing matches. And each song sounds like they've been recorded in a completely different room, studio, bedroom, whatever. Yeah, uh, but you listen to it like the second time you bang it on, this is absolutely genius. Yeah, yeah, absolutely brilliant record. But yeah, that that but that gaunt gaunt gig got me into yeah. that, which is mm -hmm. how I think it is a good thing to do. Yeah, it's not. I'm not showing records in this at all. But I did pick up a couple, and I thought that this band might come up. So I thought I'd uh, just drag it out. Uh, have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's, is it on the same label? Is the Gaunt record? Yeah, on? both on Crypt. Well, that's on. Yeah, Crypt. Yeah. 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 I've yeah. got a few there. There's a few other ones I've got as well. Um, they, they've done quite. They did quite a few. They're all behind me somewhere. Yeah. But they're, they're, all, they're all great. They're yeah. all really good records. Yeah. 
well that um yeah I, I think i went out and got um like quite quickly after that within the week i think i've got that crying your knife away live album oh yeah that was the first kind yeah. of voices record i got yeah i i um i that was i was massively jealous when um when you got that because i couldn't find it anywhere and obviously obviously in that day and age it wasn't sort of like discogs or ebay to find that sort of stuff and about two years later i happened to be um walking around soho whilst working yeah. and i and i found it and they'd put the wrong price on it in selector disc as they did quite often yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. when selector issues had that massive show at Berwick street and I think I picked it up for like six ninety nine or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> it was clearly, well, clearly the wrong price. No, but that's, I did exactly the same because I got it from um, I got it from HMV on Oxford, oh. and it was it was it was like seven ninety nine instead of seventeen ninety nine, and yeah. seventeen ninety nine at the time felt like a lot for a record. Yeah, so, but yeah, yeah, they I think they'd blown it as well with the price. Brilliant pre barcode day, I think on it as well. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they couldn't like scan it, and it was just like oh, yeah. Ex- Obviously, I did the right thing and just immediately bought it and walked out of the shop and felt felt no guilt at all. No, no, no. It's like swapping uh, swapping prices at Woolworths. I've done that. I used to do that in our price. Our price in Hemel Hempstead, I used to do that quite a lot. That's oh. how I got my racks record for 99p. You know what? I think I might have been there when you did it because I got to be invited <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah. I'll keep this information from my children just in put you. But on that note then, because the next, the next subject... Is bargain find? Well, that crying your knife away. Yeah. Kind of, but the, I, I pulled this one out because it's, it's on crypt as well. Is it's, it's this gar- one of those garage punk unknowns? Oh, back from which is it's, it's a proper thick box set. It's got four records in it, yeah. and this was also in selector disc. And they priced this one up at something like six ninety nine again. Yeah, and I just up and snapped it up straight away. Went in there about. A week later, they had another copy, and it was like twenty-five quid or something. Like that. Still, it's got been twenty-five quid. No, I know. I mean, well, yeah, four album disc set. It's such a good. So I'm trying to. It's, it's that garage punk. I know. It's um a compilation of like like all the yeah, like, like just loads of really really unknown cool. All, all those all those garage punk like back from the grave. All those sort of compilations. Yeah, yeah. Just so good and yeah yeah. Bands that did like maybe one seven-inch single in 1965 in in a part of America. And it's we, like we play them a lot here, and we look at we love because we're stands learning guitar, and there's all pictures of them with their gear. Yeah, and and, and, and like every single thing that they're holding or playing through, you want. Yeah, like, I, I'd re, you know, and every you know, and they probably picked them up for like dirt cheap, like sixty dollars for a guitar, and now they're worth like a thousand dollars and all this. Oh, yeah, stuff. I know. It's like it's all the all the information and all the bands here inside yeah. it as well. Love it. And it's got it's some of them. It's just got we've got no information on this band at all. Yeah, because they don't know they just found the record. But yeah, all, all the pictures are all very similar. They all look like sort of, they all sort of look like either yeah. the Beatles or the Rolling Stones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just letting the dog out a sec there. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. That's but that, that that was a 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 bargain, absolute yeah, that, bargain. That is a proper bargain. Yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, quite, quite, uh, yeah. What about uh, a bought on tour record then? Because uh, I'm obsessed with finding record shops when we go on tour. And where we've even, like, we've diverted. <laughs> we've gone from, like, Nottingham to Leeds, but we've gone, like, through Huddersfield to stop at Vinyl Tap just to go yeah. to the record shop. And yeah, no, it totally. Well. If you're going to go away in a van, you might as yeah. well make your fun of it. You've got, you've got to, yeah, but I've, so, I've, so I've got a couple. There's yeah. a couple, of band, I bought, oh, box, I can't find the damn thing. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah there you go, I found it. We, I bought this, we played in Paris, and um, the guy, oh. one of the, you know, the guys turn up with um, a box of records, and he's got, yeah, like, yeah, he's I love that guy. Yeah. yeah, well, I bought this off him, it's mod, it's an Australian band called Mod Vigil. All right. Um, it's like garage punky sort of stuff. It's on um, a German label called X Mist. Oh which yeah, is a really, yeah. really good, really good label. Yeah, and I bought that. Not knowing, in fact, it's still got the twelve euro sticker on it. There you go. I love <laughs> but, keeping um, the labels. I love keeping the labels on. Yeah, I've got a few. I found one, um, an Oxfam ninety nine P one the other day. It might be that US Maple record that I bought, which I absolutely hate, by the way. I think it's which crap. one? No, this one down here. I can't. I bought it for ninety nine p in Oxfam, so they obviously didn't know what it was. Is it the camera? I, you, I know you love them, but I just can't get into it. Oh, sang for yeah, that's a tough one. Is that that picture? Is it attached? The picture on the front is that an actual? No, it's printed. 
Print that oh, weird. Oh. Like mine's like a photo. Oh, hang on. No, no, it's actually, I've never noticed that. There's actually um, like little cuts in it. So there would have been a, a picture attached to it. Yeah, mine's got the photo. Yeah. No, that's the oh. toughest, that's the toughest US Maple record to get into, though. Yeah, it is. You, you dug into <laughs> the others, you would. Anyway, yeah, that's I'll... not what we're talking about, but yeah. No, yeah. we're not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's that Mod Vigil one, which is just obviously a band that happened to be in a box of records at one of the gigs we were playing. Yeah. Um, and the other one I found, um, I don't know if you remember, play, we played with this band at Magazine 4 in Belgium. They're called that, I've got that, that. that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We, I think they were so good. Yeah, yeah, they were yeah. so good. And we all just went out and bought the... Um, George went out and bought their record off the off the off the distro, and I, I don't I don't I played it last night. Um, it's it's just brilliant. It's just absolutely jarring in places. It's hardcore in the other places. What are they it's called? Hold it up so we can see what that band's called. I think it's called Yashina. Y Yashina yeah. Pestis. I think it's like a, a Black Death or something like that. I think it's what it translates to at the moment. Right, and that was in Brussels, wasn't it? We played with them. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was at Magazine Four. Yeah, yeah it was. I remember we just sort of like strong armed them after they finished and said, "Let's buy all your records, thanks." Yeah, yeah. And they, were, they were quite surprised. They were, they were good. They were really nice guys. And, yeah, yeah. I don't remember That's much. Yeah, that, that one. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that yeah. Was, they were good. I yeah, that. but I, I, you know, there's hundreds of records I bought whilst we're on too. I often come back with loads of normally records and chocolate bars I've stolen from backstage to give to the kids. So I haven't. It's because I normally <laughs> forgotten. To, so it makes like look, I bought look kids. I bought presents. Look, look, the, the tour Toblerone. <laughs> yeah. on the ferry on the way home as a present. Love it. <laughs> that's, Tim, that's Tim Farthing's old trick, wasn't it? Can't get a Toblerone in the UK. <laughs> I need to buy four bottles of wine and a Toblerone. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, what about a record that people wouldn't think that you would like? That's hard, that one. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't really think of anything because... I kind of listen to a lot of different things. Mm. The only one I sort of thought might be a bit, I don't know. I've, I've got this, it's, it's, I don't know. One I really love is this Lonnie Donegan record. Oh yeah. It's, it's absolutely brilliant. It's, um, it's just, it's just, it's just brilliant. I absolutely love it. Um, but again, I've got to listen to so many different things. Yeah. It's, it's Lonnie Donegan showcase. Um, it's, it's, it's a, it's a record I just really, really love. But yeah. I don't know. It's, it, when you listen to so many different types of music and genres, anyway, there's not much you don't really like. Yeah. Do you think it's so weird? It's, like when we were young, like 16, 17, 18, hmm. really did focus our music tastes quite heavily into like rock or metal. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. And like as, like, as the years have ticked by, we've like expanded our tastes. And yeah. I wonder, Oh, is that because you think that's because of the internet or what? Because kids, I'm pretty sure like 18 year olds now have got a way wider taste in music than we did. It's possible the internet certainly pushed it for for the people now, generations now, yeah, yeah. possibly. Because you can just jump on the internet and just hit, listen to something, anything. Whereas before we had to sort of really think, oh, right, we've only got X amount of money to spend on records. What are we going to buy? It's It's... I don't know. Maybe, maybe with us gigging and 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 chatting to other people when we were sort of like twenty to thirty, you know, even now, sort of you, you we, we, no, we we're in a car and going to gigs and stuff, and we're still getting tips from like yeah. you'll bump something off something in the van or come on, and um, everyone everyone's ears sort of prick up and go, "Oh, what's this? I don't know this." Yeah. And there's always something new you can find just from chatting to people. And well, yeah, and, well, you've held up records just now that I don't know, so. Well, there's one or like two, it, which is yeah, yeah. But it's it's it, it you always you always I, there's there's um I've, I've, again got it. I, when we were in a car, we were going to a gig when John was in the band with us, and um, he stuck this record on, and um, I straight away I was like, what is this? This is just missing. Is that um, uh, Oak by um, oh god, his bloody name Spencer Summit? But I can't remember his bloody name. Or is it the um? <laughs> Yeah, and uh, yeah. But, but again, it's just like this is a record. I'll find it. It's here somewhere. Um, Skip Spence. Skip, Skip Spence. Yeah, that record. Yeah, he went on in the back yeah. and straight away. I was like, John, what's this? And he was like, Oh, this is Skip Spence. And he told me the whole story. I was like, Mate. And the next day, I just went out and bought that that record. It yeah. Was well, so you, good. yeah. Well, you remember um, Steph Giacconi? Oh yeah, yeah. And for anyone who doesn't know, he's an Italian fella that we put a seven inch out by around twenty years ago. Um, he bought me a copy of that. He was just like, You need this record. Yeah, and left it at my house, 
It's, it's yeah, one yeah. of those records that people buy yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. 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 <laughs> Dogs yeah, destroying yeah. me PVCs. <laughs> you get alone, Sonny Jim. <laughs> he's, he's trying yeah. to put a record on. Yeah. <laughs> Here's one that I was going to hold up just for you before we get to okay. the last sort of one. Is um, and maybe we can talk about whether this was an influence on us as like 15 year olds and 16 year olds doing music locally in our very mm. first bands. And it's this. Oh, really? I love that. The, the B side is actually the best. The, the, the um, Big Wheel is the best song. Big Wheel Turn, I think. Was it, was it, it's a, it's, I can't read that, but yeah. Yeah, it's on. Uh, yeah, Big Wheel is such a great song. And they're, they're such a cool band. I think they're still anything? going. Well. Yeah, you want to say anything about them just for the hell of it? I thought they were great. They were really, they were actually really influential because we we played our first gig with them when we were sixteen. Yeah, uh, it was just like our first proper gig um, at the underground in Burko. Yeah, uh, sadly isn't there anymore. But Christ Almighty, were we lucky having a music venue in our hometown when we were growing up? Like, that was so good. And going out and going down there when we were sixteen and, and watching bands every night. And, but they yeah. when they played there, we we got support with them. And that was that was when that record came out, and they were like, "This is a this is they were the band that probably spurned us to to put out our own records and yeah. and going. They were touring in Europe and stuff. They seemed like absolute like proper a proper touring band. They they, they had like a I seem to remember they had a record that was recorded somewhere in Amsterdam. I was well, that was really cool. Yeah, this is the band from Hemel Hempstead. It's like how, yeah, like how a they, European contact there. Yeah, yeah. They but yeah, really, so they yeah so they self released it, didn't they? Yeah, and they're a local Dilks, they're, I remember their manager was Trevor Dilks, um, big beardy guy, really lovely got guy. Got his phone number here if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it. I've got it up here somewhere. Be yeah. Bit, but yeah, they were they were great. And then when they we the, the first year we went to the Reading Festival, um, nineteen ninety one, they were they played in one of the tents. And again, it was just like this is this is this is like a, they're a proper band. We could we could be like this. We could tour. We could go and play these gigs. We could go to Europe and put our records out ourselves and stuff. Yeah. Really influential bunch. Good yeah. good guy. That's what I think. But it's one of them. And I, I'm so glad I've still got it. It's one of those records I could have got rid of somehow or oh, just they're, lost they're, in the mist. I, that record goes on quite a lot. In yeah. So there's a Hemel Hempstead band. They're called that. Then I don't think they're called that now. Oh no. Bob's gone. Disaster. Anyhow, I don't think they're called that now. Maybe he'll come back. There he is. He's back now. Yeah. <laughs> He's gone again. He's new to this game. But yeah, they were a Hemel band. Never until now, EP. Look. Sorry about that. Um, one of my daughter's mates from school was trying to FaceTime with me. <laughs> Not with me, with, with Emily. <laughs> 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 Okay. Oh God! Whatever all... you're doing, what for, mate? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so uh, the final one I've got writ written down here is um, uh, a much maligned format of vinyl is the ten inch. Oh, mate, you've gone again. Um, record shops don't like them. Uh... Sorry, mate. <laughs> I missed all of that because this 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 annoying little twat is. <laughs> keeps buzzing in and I don't know how to block him <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah so favourite 10 inch it's a format that record shops don't like people don't really like and labels struggle with because they cost the same to make as 12 inch records and I don't know I've got a whole bunch of them and I don't mind them but I can no, see. I I I, I kind of like them like so that, that list actually that's Lonnie Donegan one that's a 10 inch yeah so, yeah yeah um, but there's a couple I dug out last night and, and I've got two here um one is is pavement perfect sound which is just perfect yeah but when pay when I, I think when pavement were at their best sort of doing that that sort of just yeah. noise uh, yeah. but with a real sort of poppy tune underneath it which is great yeah and the whole the whole rep that whole 10 inch is just brilliant that's the, the one on drag city i think i bought that in about 1992 or something like that. such a good record yeah that yeah. you love perfect sound ep absolutely love it and and um, it's got that song "Debris Slide" on it, which when I first heard them play it, I thought they were saying "Green Slime." So I, just, <laughs> so I was singing them, "Green Slime." <laughs> I just and then I bought the record. And, oh, it's not Green Slime at all. What a twat! <laughs> so you can say when we first saw that band, then. Yeah, Windsor Old Trout supporting. No, 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 no. Windsor Old Trout 
with seaweed. Yeah. We went to, went to see seaweed, not knowing that seaweed were actually the support band. Right. Um, and pavement, we were like, who the, who the hell are pavement? Never heard of pavement. I never, never even, never even, the name hadn't even registered at that point. Yeah. And, um, and they, uh, they, they, they came on after seaweed and very different bands as well, but the gig was great. Brilliant. It was the Gary Young years, right? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, where you'd sort of stop mid-set and do a handstand or Mate. or give out give out Maltesers or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's a great record. Did you have another one? Did you? Yeah, have I do. It's this one. It's um, it's on Ouija. It's um, DFL. Oh, have you got Have you got that? Yeah, you yeah, must yeah. have. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the split with um, Hurricane. Yeah. Which um, it's I mean the dude who used to used to be the keep uh, the the dude with the Beastie Boys, didn't he? I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. Is, it, is that song? Uh, got, is that um? Is the Hurricane song "Elbow Room" on there? Yeah, that's the yeah. He's got three songs on it. It's like that. You've got three songs. Yeah. But that that um that second one, that can we all just get along? It's got the most hookiest line in it. Like the, the little this little guitar song. Like, whip, whip, whip. <laughs> it just it's instantly addictive. You just can't stop playing it when you bung it on. I played it. I played it about three times last night. But yeah. it's um yeah, it's a great. I've, I've got. I've one. got another one of his. I've got another Hurricane record on CD, unfortunately. But um, again, I didn't realise he did so much. He's just he's brilliant. Yeah. That's that's a ten I love. And obviously, it's got DFL on the B side or the A side. Who knows? Yeah. Double A side, isn't it? Yeah. That, I brought a couple of seven inches by them. Like a couple of double seven inches. I think they signed to Epitaph in the end, didn't they? Yeah, I've got that. I've got that down here somewhere. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. That, that just... Tony's War. It's called. Yeah. Um, is, has it got Pizza Man on that? Is it pizza man's on the pizza man's on this one. Oh right, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's the that's yeah. The, that's the that's the double seven you're on about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A tough one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that actually. As, yeah, go on. No, no, yeah, I was going to say. Oh. oh mate, sorry. He called it. He called it. He's a pain in the backside. He really is. Um, as I pulled out that DFL seven, this just flopped out with it. Oh. That you can't end a story with just flopped out. Just stop holding me. You can't. You can't end is a this... story with just flopped out with it. <laughs> <Fade away. laughs> this Fugazi bootleg just oh. fell, out, fell out. It's called Blackout, uh, and it's got. Um, it's just. It's, it's a. It's a live live bootleg. I just found it, and uh, on the B side, there's a. Um, there's a version of um, waiting room. They do waiting room, and there's a power cut. All right, and the, the so someone's recording it, and there's yeah. a power cut. All the amps are gone, but the drummer just continues playing, and the whole crowd just finished the whole song. Oh. It's a and I, I, I think I picked that up for like in um oven ready. I think I found that for like a quid in a bargain bucket or something like that. Oven it's ready, called the yeah. Cut. Oven ready was one of our local shops when we were young. It was based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aylesbury yeah. one wasn't it? Yeah. Aylesbury, yeah. Fries, Fries Square was it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, but that's, yeah, that, that's that, that, that's just I just yeah, I just found that. I'll tell you about that. That's 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 such a good record. I don't have it. I don't have it. In fact, I don't. I don't think I've got any bootleg of Scarsy. Not even a t-shirt. Hmm. So. No, I don't. Well, yeah, yeah it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be real, would it? <laughs> it's not. This is not a Fugazi t-shirt, apparently. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna show one more because it's one of the one of the best bands I think that we've seen together in the last few years. Um, mm. It's. Um, it's the Warthog. Oh yeah, seven inch. Oh yeah, their most recent one. They've done four or five seven inches. This came out on Static Shock, and um, uh, when like we both saw them in uh, Manor House at the uh, mm. Stacks at weekend, and it was just one of those. It really re enlivened my feeling towards like I don't know what it was. It really stuck with me how good it was. That that gig was. Um absolutely fantastic they were just so on fire yeah um and they were really up for it it was really odd because the night before um i bumped into luke younger um in a pub in hackney or something like that and he yeah. was with the drummer he was with the drummer from um he was with the guy that runs static shock and the guy the drummer from warthog right right and, uh, and that he was just he was just, he was really enthused about doing this gig it was like this is great. I'm really looking for this, this, this gig's be fantastic I just like this is like the night before how excited he was to play the gig and yeah. just being like I think it was quite cool to be in London as well for him it was just like yeah. it, was, it, was, it was so good yeah and there's lots of like footage of it on YouTube and it really felt 
don't know, for whatever reason, it just felt like a moment watching it. Mm. Yeah, it was. It was. I've got some video of it on my, I've made on my phone. It's obviously yeah. so it sounds terrible, but you get the idea how good it was just from the, the people just rolling over the top of yeah. the crowd surfing and stuff. In, 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 in a gig, you wouldn't sort of expect that sort of thing to really, really kick off the way it did. And it was just gorgeous to stand at the side. Obviously, yeah. I'm too old to go in the middle now. Well, exactly. Just stand aside and just watch these, just this mob of sweaty people just having a, the time of their lives yeah. and the band on stage just being just yeah. tight as tight as a nut. They were so good. Yeah, really, yeah, really yeah. good night. Really, really good gig. Yeah, I've been trying to get their first couple of seven inches, but they're just too expensive yeah. for me. I don't, I'm, don't, I'm not willing to go over yeah. the prices, but I got this one on the previous one. Um, mm. But yeah, it's a great record. Yeah, that's a brilliant record. Uh, um, well, I think we should call it a uh, night or day. Sounds yeah, good. If that's okay. Um, thanks. Yeah, so yeah. Thanks for that. And talking. That's um, all right. Thanks for having me. And um, I hope uh, whoever it was was trying to get in touch with you uh, has something really <laughs> important to say because they've really screwed this up. This was our Hollywood <laughs> moment. <laughs> well, yeah, it's nearly eight, it's nearly eight o'clock. I should be in bed anyway, really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna click uh, stop on this now. See you later. Okay.